Good evening, Mary. We're having a family gathering at our house this coming Saturday. You're coming, right, Mary? Yes, of course. Dan and I will be there. But I'm telling you, you'd better dress properly. What? You're always so plain, aren't you, Mary? I'm sure you know that. Many of my relatives are business owners or rich people. I'm sure everyone craves something decent. This time, I'm going to order some caviar. If you show up poorly dressed, I'll be embarrassed. Please, don't dress inappropriate like you always do. Of course, I'll be dressed appropriately. It's not just about what you wear. Be careful with what you bring and say. Don't be so obvious that you're poor. I think you have misunderstood something. I'm not poor. Don't lie to me. Ever since you came to greet me, you've always worn plain, cheap clothes. That's just because I like simple clothes. Dan is also so... He just had to... Got married so early, earlier than John. And with a poor woman who's way under his league. I'm not poor. Yeah, whatever. You just don't want to admit it. But you're still working, aren't you? Yes, I am. Why don't you stop working and become a full-time housewife? Dan works for a big company. You can live on his salary alone, right? But you just have to refuse to quit your job. I think it's because you grew up poor and you are uncomfortable unless you're working hard. I can live on Dan's salary alone. I work because I love my job. I want to save for when we have children in the future. Besides, if I quit my job, you would be in trouble too, right? Why is that? Why would I be in trouble? Your job has nothing to do with me. It has a lot to do with you. I mean, if you hate me so much, I'll skip the dinner party. What? You insisted that Dan and I attend. I was planning to go too. But if you're just going to complain me about being poor and unfit for Dan, I don't have to attend. No, Mary, you have to come too. Why is that? If my son and his wife don't come, I don't know what my relatives will say. Oh. By the way, you said this time it's your treat. Just to be sure, may I ask about the budget for the dinner party? Budget? Well, it's probably going to be around $4,000. What? That much? Why are you so surprised? Wait a minute. There will be a little more than 10 people there that day, right? That's right. Isn't 4000 for 10 people way too much? We're ordering high-end caviar. It should cost around 4000 right? 4000 is... That means enough to pay the two-month mortgage. Huh? Mortgage? It's a once-a-year dinner party, so I can understand why you are so excited about it. But if you can afford such an extravagance, shouldn't you first use the money to pay off the monthly mortgage? Don't you think your priorities are out of order? Huh? Priorities? Why should I care about that? Because it costs $1,500 every month to pay the mortgage on the house. That's something you and Dan should take care of on your own. Please, don't rip me off. I'm not. I'm only talking about the obvious. Oh well, if you're worried about the loan, why don't you save money? Well... Oh my god, it's no use talking to you. I told you I'd treat you to a delicious caviar dinner, but all you do is complain. Anyway, you must dress properly for the dinner party, is that clear? What? Wait a minute, Emmy. Caviar? Can't you cancel it now? Emmy! Mary? About that dinner party we talked about the other day? I've changed my mind. Ah, did you cancel the caviar? 
I'm glad. After all, 4,000 is too much. What? What are you talking about? I decided to order not only caviar, but also a high-end Italian caterer. Huh? I thought some of my relatives might not like caviar. So you mean, the budget has increased? Yes. The budget might be around 5,400. <laughs> you are always complaining about caviar. It would be a hassle if you complained again on the day, so I thought I'd let you know ahead of time. Emmy? Are you sure you'll be okay? Huh? Taking advantage of the fact that Bob is in the hospital, you're spending money like Jeff Bezos. Are you sure you're going to be okay? Wait, what do you mean? Are you telling me to be stingy and save money when it's a family gathering? Don't you think you're being rude to me? I'm just saying that I'm concerned. I haven't fallen so low that you have to worry about me. But the mortgage... What? Are you talking about that again? I told you the other day, that is something you and Dan should be able to handle. I don't know. I don't think it's right to be extravagant while Bob is in the hospital. I'm still worried about spending 5400 Shouldn't you be worried about yourself? Me? You're not saying you don't remember me telling you this, are you? I'm sorry, but yeah, I don't. Huh? I'm certain that we're not short on cash at the moment, but... Well, what a person. I knew it. You're just wanting to rip me off. Uh, you know what? Ah, you're driving me crazy. I feel like I'm going crazy talking to you. Anyway, I'll pay for the dinner party so you stay out of it. Bye! Honey, you busy? Sorry if you're busy. Oh, honey. I just finished work and I'm on my way home. What's up? It's about the weekend dinner party. Oh. You know the annual dinner with relatives? We're getting together at my parents' house this time too. What about it? It looks like Emmy is covering all the expenses. Have you heard what the budget is for this dinner party? What? No. I just heard she's ordering caviar, but... With my dad in the condition, he's in. I'm guessing it'll be reasonably priced caviar? No, that's the thing. I heard she's going to spend 5400 for the caviar plus a catering service from a high-end Italian restaurant. 5400 That's a lot of money. I think so, too. Many of your relatives are rich, so Emmy seems really into it. Seriously? That's just trying to show off. I wonder if Mom knows her place. I tried to remind her of the mortgage, but it doesn't seem to be working. She's upset? It's like she's upset with me. I don't know. I know it's a once-in-a-year dinner party and there's no need to be stingy with it, but... But we're also under a lot of pressure right now. And to spend all the money like this, it's just... Oh, I agree. If she has the money to do such a thing, use it to pay off the mortgage first. If it were possible, I would try to persuade her to spend less, but I don't think she'll listen to me. Either way, we're running out of time. There must be cancellation fee, and we would have to apologize to the restaurant where we ordered the food. Besides, Mom always dotes on John. She never listens to me. And she's still complaining about the fact that I got married before him. Well, I've been told that too. I don't agree with it, but I guess there's nothing we can do this time. I know. Anyway, we are both going to the dinner that day, so let's keep an eye on her. I'll let Dad know how things going. Right, that would be great. Okay, I'm heading home now. Okay, safe trip home. Mary? Are you already on your way? Oh yes, Dan and I are on our way. We should be there in about ten minutes. Oh, well... Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. You need to go to another room after the dinner party starts. What? Why? 
Well, I asked you to come as a married couple for the sake of appearances, but caviar and Italian food are too good for you. Yes? It's for not knowing your place. You'll always be poor because you have to pay that monthly mortgage. You're the one to say. I'm saying it because I'm the only one who can say it. Because you were so vain and bought that mansion. What are you talking about? You have no money, but you forced yourself to get a mortgage. And yet, you want me to save the budget for dinner parties and pay the mortgage for our own house. There's no limit to how brazen you can be. Oh, that's how you interpreted it. No wonder we're not on the same page. When the dinner party starts, quickly go to the next room. And when the time is right, pretend that something urgent has come up and go home alone. That way you can at least save your face. Oh. Well, I'd feel bad if you had nothing to eat. You can at least have instant ramen. Instant ramen? Well, beggars can't be choosers, you know. You're so shabby, so after you eat your instant ramen, just go home. Okay. Well then, neither Dan nor I will be attending today's dinner party. Huh? What are you talking about? You'll be arriving here soon, right? You don't want me to attend the dinner party, right? I'm going to turn around and go home now. Then why don't you go home alone, Mary? Only Dan should attend. When I told him what you said to me earlier, Dan doesn't feel like going to the dinner anymore. Then you can both skip it. I'd be better off without Dan and you. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'll stop paying the mortgage on the house. What? I won't be paying $1,500 a month from now on. Oh dear, I don't know what you think you're doing, but you and Dan are the ones who will suffer, aren't you? You'll see who gets in trouble later. You're just full of nonsense like that. I'll enjoy the caviar and Italian food. You guys can do whatever you want. Hey, please pick up the phone. Good evening, Emmy. What's wrong? I'm in trouble. What is? It's the monthly mortgage. Oh. Is it true that you are paying for my house? Not the mansion you live in with Dan? That's right. Who told you that? From all my relatives who were at the dinner party. I see. My relatives asked me why Dan and Mary weren't there, so I told them that you were trying to make me pay the mortgage on your house. Then all my relatives said, it's the opposite. I just thought that it was a bad joke, but then I got a call from the bank saying that I hadn't paid this month's mortgage due to insufficient balance in my account. I didn't think it was true. Yes, I have been transferring 1500 each month to Bob's account for mortgage. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? You embarrassed me in front of my relatives. I told you at the family meeting. Huh? Bob had to be hospitalized suddenly and he had to take a leave of absence from work. He might not be able to pay the mortgage during that time because the treatment is going to cost a lot of money. So since I earn more than Dan, I am responsible for the monthly payment of 1500 for the time being. I can't believe that you are making more money than Dan. No, that's not the point. What about the mansion? Bob was hospitalized at the same time when you and Dan moved into the mansion. That's why I thought the mortgage was for the mansion. The house was given to me by my grandfather. Huh? Your grandfather? I'm sure I told you that. That house was originally my grandparents. They were getting old and it was getting too much for them to manage, so they decided to move into a small bungalow. Right around that time, Bob was hospitalized and I had to pay the mortgage. My grandfather, who was worried about our life, asked us if we would like to move into the house they lived in. So that's what happened. Bob suggested that I move in with you. That way, it would make more sense for me to pay the mortgage. 
but you were so strongly against it. So we decided to live in my grandfather's house while paying only the mortgage on your house. Are you telling the truth? John is still single, but you said you only want to live with him and his wife in the future and refused to live with us, didn't you? Oh, is that right? Don't play dumb with me. Well, now I'm glad we didn't move in together. Oh. You really don't remember anything, do you, Emmy? Bob, you, John, Dan, and I. We had a family meeting, right? That's when we talked. Well... Well, I think you were half asleep, weren't you? You only leaned forward when we were talking about something that involved you. When Bob asked you to go to work to support the family finances, you protested that as a full-time housewife, there was no way you could find a job. When I asked you to live with me, you said, I don't want to live with Dan and you. We couldn't come to an agreement, and in the end, I had to compromise a lot. But I didn't think that you had refused to live with me because you didn't understand what I was talking about. I didn't realize that was the story. Well, Bob told me I don't have to pay the mortgage anymore. What? He has decided to sell the house. What? He's giving up the house? You both can't pay the mortgage, so he has no choice but to let it go. Bob doesn't want to give up the home he bought. But to the point, to get both Dan and I involved is ridiculous. After hearing about how much money you were spending and how you were treating me, he decided that it was no longer a good idea. He also promised to pay back the mortgage that I had paid until now. Oh no. What am I supposed to do now? If he sells the house, I will have no place to live. I'm sure that's true. Don't say I'm sure like it's someone else's problem. I am your in-law. No, Emmy. You made me pay the mortgage on your own house. I can't consider someone who makes me pay their own mortgage and then calls me poor to be my in-law. I didn't know you were paying my mortgage. It's not my fault. It's not that you didn't know. It's just that you didn't listen to me. I'm sorry I called you poor. So please, please convince Bob not to sell the house. You can tell that directly to Bob. Well... Bob will be discharged soon, right? I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about then. Please ask him about the future. Mary? I have nothing more to say, so if you'll excuse me. Well then... So long, Emmy. Bob finished his treatment and was safely discharged from the hospital. Then we had another discussion at my in-law's house. Although Emmy was strongly opposed to the idea, it was agreed that my in-law's house would be sold. After that, Bob scolded Emmy for spending 5400 at a dinner party. Furthermore, Bob and John were very hard on her for continuously verbally abusing me despite the fact that I was paying the mortgage. Emmy cried and pleaded for forgiveness, but Bob's anger did not abate. Finally, they got divorced. After being evicted from that house, she rented a small apartment and started living alone. She was planning to move in with John when he got married. But to her surprise, John got married to a foreigner and went abroad. Emmy, who is now completely alone, is living a life of poverty and draining what little money she has left from her share of the property. Bob, on the other hand, lives with Dan and I in the house given to me by my grandfather. Dan and I are busy working together, but Bob actively takes care of the house, which has been very helpful to us. I would like to continue to live with my family on good terms. Kate, I'm sorry this happened. It's all my fault. I'm really sorry this time. I never expected to run you over with my car. It was an accident. Don't worry about it too much. Both Daniel and I understand. Everything's gonna be fine. But I caused the accident while I was driving my car. And you also broke your right arm. I can't just get over it. 
It wasn't life-threatening, so I'm okay. You were lucky it was me. If you had a car accident with someone else, it could have been a bigger problem. Yeah, I was really lucky. But it was definitely unlucky for you, Kate. You let me off the hook so easily. Well, we're relatives. I just want you to learn from your mistakes. I don't plan to ask you to pay me money or anything. Really? Are you sure? I don't want our relationship to get awkward because of it. I'm your daughter-in-law. You're going to be my mother-in-law for the rest of my life. Plus, the insurance company paid me money to cover for my fees. Thanks, Kate. I'm really sorry. It's all my fault, yet you're so kind to me. I hope I can do something in return. If so, could you get a traffic mirror? I've been asking you this several times already. It's pretty dangerous near your parking lot. Yes, for sure. My husband got it as soon as I had an accident. It's difficult to look out for other cars and pedestrians when you park your car. I think the bad visibility caused this accident. I should have listened to your advice earlier. If only I had it before this accident. I might have been able to prevent it from happening. Uh, I'm really sorry. We can't change what already happened. As long as we learn from our mistakes, it's okay. It's something from the past. But, oh, Kate, I have an idea. How about you move in with us for a while? Uh-huh. Move into your house. I heard you were about to leave the hospital. I bet you still can't use your arm. Daniel's also on his business trip, isn't he? Yeah, that's right, but... I don't want to be a burden to your family. There's nothing to worry about. I bet it's hard to do everything by yourself with just your left arm. Let me help you, Kate. We'll look after you until you recover. Really? Of course. You're more than welcome. I'll be glad if you can accept my offer. All right, if you say so. Thanks so much. I'll pick you up on the day you leave the hospital. Before we head to my house, we'll stop by at your house so that you can get some necessities. Okay, thanks a lot. Kate, I'm sorry to ask you to buy so many things. Is your arm okay? Yes, I'm perfectly fine. I want to express my gratitude for having me in your house. Going shopping for groceries actually helps me exercise too. I'm glad to hear that. You've been so nice to me, I can't just do nothing at home. It feels nice to do housework once in a while. Really, I hope you don't mind. You're really good with your hands, Kate. You manage to do housework with just your left arm. Doesn't it feel weird? I'm actually surprised myself that I'm managing it. There are still many things I can't do, though. You're doing really well. You'll be able to live your normal life again in no time. I hope so. There's still some time until Daniel comes home from his business trip. I really hope I get better until then. If so, do you want to try doing some more housework? Uh-huh. What do you mean? You know, the housework I'm asking you to do now is easy. Like going to shop for groceries and doing some laundry. 
Well, I guess it's still really hard for me to cook. Uh, right, but I think it's best if you start getting used to other things as well. Maybe start doing some housework on your own. I think I get what you're saying. Don't you agree? I'm glad you understand. We really have similar mindsets. But, you know, I think it might still be hard for me. As I told you earlier, I can't do complicated stuff. Be confident. You can do it. It's gonna be a big help if you can help me around the house. And I think it's also best for you. So, how about we give it a try? If you insist. But I hope you understand that things can still be hard for me. Please go easy on me. Of course, I completely understand. Thanks. I'll try my best then. Great, then I have a favor to ask you. Could you get some more groceries? More? I thought this was it for today. I always list only a few things when you go shopping. I thought it might be hard for you to bring everything home. But now that I don't have to worry about it anymore, I'll give you the full list of things I want you to get. Okay, uh, send me the full list. Thanks, you're a big help. I'll send it to you later. We'll do some housework together when you come home, okay? As soon as I get home? The earlier we start, the better. It's better to get used to it fast. Okay. Thanks for helping with the housework, Kate. We'll work hard together. Kate, how was your visit to the hospital? Are you on your way home? Yeah, I'm heading home. The doctor told me I was getting better. Oh, it's nice to hear that. You've been out since early morning, so there's still a lot of housework left to do. Make sure you finish them when you get home. Uh, can we talk for a moment? I don't want to tell you this. But I think you're asking too much from me. Too much? I'm doing most of the housework. To be honest, I haven't seen you do anything. Let me make it clear. I'm injured. What do you mean? You can still use your left arm. And you're really good with your hands. You can live in my house. Can't you at least do some housework? I want to ask you something. Didn't I come to stay with you so that I can recover? I don't think this is helping me recover. If you're capable, you should do it. I thought you said it made you feel good. Why are you complaining all of a sudden? I was talking about the minimum. You can't just make me do everything around the house. You haven't done any housework recently. Shut up. Just come home and do the housework. Don't complain just because you're injured. Seriously. Why do you think I'm injured? I thought you said it was an accident. Why do you have to bring that up? Shut up and do your work. Oh, I see. You're over. Goodbye. Uh-huh. What do you mean? What's over? I was just talking to myself. I'm glad I got to know your honest feelings. I thought I might be honest with you, too. You don't make any sense. Forget it. Just come home and do the housework or I'll never forgive you. No, I'm never going to your house again. Daniel is coming home today from his business trip. 
I'll go and get my stuff with him after he gets home. Uh, huh? Daniel is coming home already? I thought that wasn't the plan. Well, plans are bound to change. You'll understand soon. Thanks for having me. Things are gonna get hard for you, but good luck. Uh, what do you mean? I won't forgive you if you don't come home. How about the housework? Do it yourself. I'm gonna get busy, so I can't waste my time on you. Goodbye. Kate? A lawyer sent me a letter about our accident and compensation money. What's going on? Everything should be clear. As it says on the letter, I'm asking you to pay for compensation. Apparently, I can still ask you for it. So I decided to do so. What are you thinking? I thought you said you won't be asking me for money. Back then, that was what I planned. We didn't even discuss about it properly. I still have the right to ask you for compensation. How can you bring this up again? Why are you doing this to me? I thought I told you this before. I told you I won't be asking for money as long as you learn from your mistakes. So what? I learned from my mistakes. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Try reflecting on your actions. You definitely didn't learn from your mistakes. What did I do? I got a traffic mirror near my parking lot. And I even offered you to stay with our family until you recover. I'm clearly trying to make it up for you. See? I never asked you to take care of me. And you made me do all the housework. I thought you were capable of doing housework. Come on, this isn't much of a problem. Considering my injury, you should know that it's hard for me to do housework. But you still did it. You never complained, too. I told you it was too much for me, but you never listened. You kept on saying that I should do something in return. But you were technically forcing me to do so. How can you act like this when I'm injured because of you? That's your interpretation. I never intended to do so. I'm not the villain here. If you really think you did the right thing, be confident with yourself. There shouldn't be any problem even if I sued you. Why are you suddenly silent? I thought you did nothing wrong. I am sorry about the accident. But I don't understand why you want to sue me. Well, that's up to me, isn't it? I don't care how you feel about it. And by the way, I'll also sue you regarding how you've been treating me. Uh huh. Of what do you mean? As I said earlier, while I lived with you, you treated me pretty harshly. Not only that, you made me get injured. You also treated me like a housemaid. So I decided to sue you regarding both of these things. Don't be ridiculous. How can you sue me for just those things? Don't you realize that's why you're being sued? I have proof from when I lived with you. And I also have these conversations recorded. I think I have a pretty high chance of winning this case. Hey, wait a moment. Is Daniel home from his business trip? What did he say about this issue? I'm guessing he's asking you to stop all this nonsense. Why would he? He's the one who decided to sue you. He's even planning to break relations with you. You have to be kidding. 
I'm his mother. His real mother. If you can't believe it, go and ask him directly. Let's meet in the courtroom. There's no use arguing right now. Please, listen to me. I am so sorry. Let me apologize for everything. If you want money, I'll pay you as much as you want. Don't sue me. Please, it's ridiculous. I thought you already received a letter from my lawyer. It's too late. If you regret everything, blame yourself. I'm looking forward to seeing how this ends. As I planned, I sued my mother-in-law and successfully won the case. Not only that, I got some compensation from the accident. I was also able to receive some more money regarding how she planned everything beforehand. I'm not sure why she offered me to stay at her house in the first place. But from the evidence, it was judged to be premeditated. My mother-in-law and her family are currently having a hard time gathering enough money to pay for compensation. Shortly after I got home from her house, my arm fully recovered, and now I'm back to living my normal life. Housework felt so easy after completing them with just one arm when I was living with her. I guess I was the one who benefited most through this incident. <laughs>